I'm I'm getting a little bit annoyed and frustrated, especially from people on fashion Twitter, or I feel like in general on on you know fashion social media, I feel like there isn't enough respect given to the people who are legitimately carrying the fashion industry on their back. And I feel like a lot of those guys and girls are people who come from a streetwear education or streetwear background. Now, for whatever reason, people within the fashion with a capital F sphere, I feel like disrespect and disregard people who come from streetwear because they don't view streetwear as a credible or worthwhile um, design practice or something that will come close to warranting said person having a job at a big fashion house or a big fashion brand, which I think is absolute nonsense, especially nowadays with all the proof that we have with all these other you know, people that have done great work, Virgil Abloh, of course, RIP being a great example of it. But nowadays, these big fashion brands, big fashion houses are really struggling with relevancy. They're really struggling with connecting with youth culture. They're really struggling with tapping into the cultural zeitgeist. They're really struggling with just really being about it and being relevant and being in a conversation. They just don't know what to do. And most of it comes from, you know, them their insistence on not kind of freshening up their own ranks. Uh, maybe they just are kind of stuck in their own ways. Maybe they don't know. Whatever it may be the reason, at least some of these people who are who own these fashion brands especially because they're kind of high level operators who are like ceos and ctos of like fintech companies whatever they may be who then come into fashion and not necessarily passion for fashion people they're able to look at it in the cold heart of day and say hey this brand this house isn't going where we need to go if we keep conject if we keep continuing on this co on this trajectory we're going to lose loads of money we're going to have to shut stores and we're going to be defunct we need to revive this brand Let's get out, get out there and look at the people who are actually garnering attention, who are selling out their crappy little streetwear brand and somehow be able to get that person, put them in this hot seat and hope that with more resources, with more help, uh, with more production, uh, you know, um, assets, whatever it may be, that we're maybe going to help them to raise their level and to maybe bring our brand kicking and screaming back into the 21st century. That's what most of these brands are doing. And for the most part, it's working phenomenally well, right? You look at the stuff that Virgil did at, Virg Virgil did at Louis Vuitton. And now you're looking at the stuff that um, Matthew Williams is doing at Givenchy. And then I think like there's no doubt in my mind that what Ma Matthew Williams is doing at Givenchy is definitely the reason why Givenchy has come back into the current conversation, whether you like it or you don't. Now, i am got a bit of a soft spot in my heart for Givenchy because I was a really big fan of the Ricardo Chichis era. I felt like Ricardo Chichis era, especially for the models that used to walk on the runway and the casting they used to do, was really refreshing because it was a real contrast from the sort of skinny... Um, super rock you know rock style that Hedy Samain was kind of pushing out when he was at let's say Saint Laurent right that was kind of the same sort of era and I felt like it was a real kind of difference again from the stuff that I was liking in terms of the casting of Rick Owens models back in the days too so to see these big burly kind of really ripped and muscular dudes walking on Givenchy and also see these really aggressive big baggy um sort of clothes that were kind of before Balenciaga's time or before Vince Mott's time was also refreshing too because it wasn't all skinny you know bar main type style sizing but of course things move things change Givenchy went through a bit of a low stage and then you know um Givenchy decided they needed to re revive the brand so they went and tapped one I think one of the best designers out there on the market at the moment in Matthew Williams who obviously founded Elix and was somebody that I felt like of the whole cohort that surrounds Kanye West or you know let's say that that whole Bin Chiro gang is there anybody that I felt like could maybe transfer their skills in screen printing t-shirts into maybe working for a big fashion house I always felt like uh, Matthew Williams and funny enough Heron Preston would be the best to do it because of Matthew Williams kind of current background coming from you know costume design and styling and all that sort of stuff with Lady Gaga and having kind of big picture ideas and goals and telling a story I felt like he could lend these skills to a fashion house way easier in the same way that I felt like Heron Preston being a kind of communications person and not really being a fashion guy in that regard he would also do really well because he could look at it from a kind of somewhat detached distance right as opposed to where I felt like Virgil because you were so engrossed in it sometimes when you're when you love something too much you get too much in the weeds you start worrying about stuff that isn't really necessary isn't not wasn't you start worrying about you start over worrying about stuff they shouldn't be worrying about stuff without kind of looking at the bigger picture but regardless we move 
I still think Matthew Williams has done a great job at, at Givenchy. I feel like he's 100% revived the brand himself, personally, in my regard. Um, I feel like it's come back in a cultural conversation, but for some reason, on social media, he doesn't get the respect I feel like he deserves. And I feel like it's very unwanted or it's somewhat, it's extremely unwarranted because I don't feel like there's much difference between what Givenchy's doing at the level that he's doing it between someone like a Jack Moose. But Jack Moose seems to get complete blight from some people. People look look by it, even though I feel like Simon Pod, Jack Moose has completely, you know, fucked over his brand. It's not as good as it once was. It's definitely kind of resting on its laurels. And especially in the recent collection, it's just crap after crap after crap. But for whatever reason, because he has maybe the right face or he comes from the right background or he has the right education, people don't criticize him the same way they do Matthew Williams. And I feel like this little clip here, taken from the end of the Givenchy show, where some people were complaining and were upset that um, Matthew Williams was showing uh, clothes that, if I'm not mistaken, had print on it i think as we've done people people upset there was an actual look here that people were really pissed off about that seemed to really get people riled up on social media i think it might have been look which one is it yeah there we go it was look 25 look 27 this with the kind of um sweatsuit that had Givenchy emblazoned on the front of the crotch and Givenchy written again on like in an arc logo <coughs> on the zip up hoodie <coughs> Sorry. To me, this is like quintessential, easy kind of stuff that you would see in a fashion collection because you know that's definitely going to sell um, in store. And it's not something that's that crazy. Loads of brands have done hoodies. Loads of brands have done, <coughs> sorry, top to bottom tracksuits in this way. But for some reason, the fact that he dared to put a logo on the front of the crotch of a sweatpant and the front of the crotch of a, and the front of the chest of a hoodie, people lost their minds. And then they decided to kind of. I won't say ambush him, but somewhat grill him on it. And it just felt a little bit disrespectful. And it also felt a little bit like they would never do this to Jack Moose, right? They would never do this to somebody, um, whoever's designing that, Chanel, who's kind of run, who's kind of just pushing out, you know, wasted fabric after wasted fabric, collection after wasted fabric. But for every reason, Matt Williams gets this kind of question. So I'm going to play the clip for you quickly so you can hear what they say to him after the show. <laughs> and there's absolutely nothing wrong with logos nothing wrong with logos so and i always i don't know maybe for me it's weird because it's coming from a white dude too i always felt like this is version that fashion industry seems to have with streetwear it always felt like a weird dog whistle to me it, whenever i heard someone say oh the return of tailoring as a sort of retort as a pushback against streetwear it was sort of like their way of saying that how oh yeah this is going we're gonna go back to whitewashing this industry we're gonna go go back to having taking all these ragamuffins off of our runway no more trainers no more hoodies no more jeans all this sort of stuff it just really pissed me off because i feel like nowadays if you go if you look at just what people are wearing on the street day to day this idea that people are walking around with capital f fashion garments isn't a case regardless people are mixing and matching and changing their their wear their way of wearing of course demner at balenciaga and of course formerly of vetima he has kind of essentially single-handedly redefined what chic is by essentially elevating stuff like t-shirts and hoodies and jeans and whatnot but for the most part life in general people in the real world have kind of told the fashion industry in no uncertain terms that they don't want gaudy fashion capital f items for the most part they want stuff that's reflective of their real life stuff that they can actually wear in real time now there is still a place for that capital f fashion that still exists i feel like nowadays couture season hasn't been as great as i feel like couture season has been as best as it's ever been in recent times because there's a clear delineation between what couture is and what ready to wear is but still i feel like for a brand like Givenchy. That's predominantly aimed, I feel like, at some sort of youth market that has its keys or is is sort of like ties in streetwear in some ways, some regards. That was also in the lurch and out there, you know, not doing any great things for a while. To have someone like a Matthew Williams who can come in and revive the brand and make it covetable and make it interesting is what they wanted. And what they wanted was what he's basically serving on his runway. And I feel like that criticism that, that people have against him in terms of the logos and stuff mostly comes from people who don't actually exist or live in a real world and also doesn't come from people who actually will end up buying the stuff anyway because i feel like a lot of fashion people who kind of are overly critical about streetwear's influence on fashion number one don't even wear the clothes in the first place they don't buy them they don't even see them in stores they consume everything online and they just kind of operate from this kind of um 
I feel like idealistic, fanciful sort of idea of what they remember the brand was back in the day. But things change, things elevate, things move, times go on. And if you're a brand like Givenchy, House of Givenchy, and you want to reintroduce yourself back to the youth market, you want to be able to kind of resuscitate the brand after years of being out in the wilderness, to have somebody that can create hardware and jewelry pieces that look like this, that are covetable, great accessories, like sunglasses like this, great outerwear pieces and jackets, because you know that's what he does really well at Leaks. Even the underwear now that they're kind of going into is, come on, man, that's going to be covetable. The logo on it, people are going to wear, the belt, the track, like, everything about this is absolutely stunning. I'd wear this entire look in the heartbeat and I'm sure there's plenty of other people that do the same thing and if I'm not mistaken this is kind of hard to see in this picture but this looks like pearls right and if you're familiar with what's going on now on TikTok and online on fashion nowadays with you know with the trendy kids now pearls are a big thing with kind of bro chatty fashion type dudes so the fact that he's able to kind of make his twist on it and apply it to the Givenchy way and you know include this kind of padlock design that's sort of been the mainstay in what he's done at Givenchy for the moment he announced his tenure there I think is incredibly good to see and I feel like for somebody to take you know screen printing Bintro t-shirts um, doing what he did with at least when he first started and take that to Givenchy and actually make it look different because I still feel like there is a clear delineation between what he does at Givenchy and what he does at Alix. I think speaks a lot for how talented uh, Matthew Williams is as a, as a designer. Um, that he's able to do this again with no formal training. It's come from somebody who's just learned on the go, learned via the internet, learned via experience, learned via real life, tactile doing stuff, and has been able to apply it. Um, and all this sort of stuff, I feel like, is stuff that the people that actually own the brand, who actually look at the bottom line, who see the sales figures, will be like, you know what, this is going to work really well. This sort of stuff, it's going to sell like hotcakes, this kind of bandana, um, snood, face mask type thing. Like, come on, man, you know it's really going to do well. It's got a backpack here with the Givenchy written on the, on the straps, this Anorak um, half sip jacket with the Givenchy logo here, the gloves, workwear type gloves, I guess he's done, he's kind of twist on, he's twist on rain boots that everyone's wearing nowadays. Like, it's all really great stuff that you know is going to sell and it's going to do really well when it eventually does end up coming out so this idea that the, the logos are a bad thing is insane and i feel like it's again a dog whistle to get people like myself out of the industry and to kind of whitewash it again which i feel like is absolutely ridiculous because we are where we are the door's already been open flood of my streetwear um alumni and fan you know, alumni and peers and people that i kind of looked up to have kind of forced their way in and they're not going away anytime soon because now <coughs> that same streetwear fan who kind of follow those guys into these brands are also going to slightly slowly but surely mature into those brands and are going to want to wear them on a kind of daily and week yearly basis and that's probably what these brands want as well they want to be able to take a kid who wants to imagine you're Givenchy and you hire Matthew Williams under the under the proviso that he's going to hopefully be able to take a kid who bought a roller coaster belt back in the day or like a chest rig and he's going to be able to take him through the journey of maybe buying some boots that he saw Ian Connor wear from Elix maybe buying a jacket and now he's like 21, 22 he's got his first job and now maybe he wants to buy a suit and he ends up buying his first suit from Givenchy because Matthew Williams the guy that he kind of grew up idolising is now a Givenchy and then that kid ends up being maybe a long time Givenchy buyer or something else maybe when he turns 40 he ends up being a guy who just buys all his trunks and his suitcases and his levers pieces whatever it may be from Givenchy only that's kind of the long term goal they have with this sort of thing so I feel like in the end it does end up paying dividends like I mean especially if they're good at their job obviously if they're not good at their job it kind of hurts the brand but I feel like if you're decent enough at what you do and I feel like, you know, Matthew Williams already kind of transcended his street when he does it at Leaks. I think at Leaks already was, you know, essentially fashion with a capital F. So he had loads of practice doing it, but he's able to kind of, you know, continue doing it also at Givenchy. I feel like it was a really great step. And I actually like that earring too. Look, the padlock on the earring too. Like, this is all stuff that I'd wear in a heartbeat. So, yeah, I feel like the, the criticism against um, Matthew Williams is really unwarranted. Um, I feel like they wouldn't ask those kind of questions and grill, you know, Simon Pot uh, flipping at uh, Jack Moose with about the same sort of thing, even though I feel like he's come from a way higher lofty kind of position and crashed and looks completely different to what you know a shadow of his former self the recent collaboration with nike is horrendous the recent collection of itself was horrendous it's all really rudderless and repetitive stuff that doesn't necessarily feel interesting in the slightest but for some reason people turn a blind eye to that but they want to grill matthew williams it's just really really unfair in my opinion um but hey maybe i'm in the minority there maybe i'm in the minority